So in this lesson today, guys, we're going to go into analyzing decisions a little bit more. Um, so we're going to actually talk about expected value um, more in this lesson and in a little bit different representation. So expected value is a weighted average. This is an important word right here, weighted average, because it tells us that we're actually going to multiply something times our percentages. So it, the expected value is the weighted average of the numerical outcomes of a probability experiment. To find this value, you multiply each outcome by its probability. So the sum of the probabilities is always equal to 1 or 100%, okay? And remember, when we do these percentages, we're actually going to change them to decimals anyway. So when we add them all up, ultimately, they're still going to equal 1. So example one says, what is the expected value of a six-sided number cube with sides labeled one through six? The probability for each number is below. So obviously, the probability of rolling any one of those numbers is one-sixth, right? So when we're talking about weighted values, though, we're going to take the number on top, and we're going to multiply it times the number on the bottom, and then we're going to add. We're going to do that with all these. So we're going to do one times our one-sixth plus two times our one-sixth plus three, you guys get it. And this is already on y'all's paper. I'm just showing you how to do it. Um, and you guys can do all of this in your calculator. Literally put um, the one sixth in parentheses and do one divided by six. Okay, so when you do that, um, the outcome is 3.5. That's your answer, okay? So now I'd like you guys to try this problem. Go ahead and try it. Come back to me when you're done. If you get stuck, you can obviously come back to the video. So on this one, it says, what's the expected value of rolling a six-sided number cube as shown below? So this time we have um, six sides, but some of those sides are represented more than once. So our, if we roll a one, we only see that one out of six times, right? Okay. And then if we look at the two, notice that there's two twos. So we're going to do two times two over six because that two is represented twice. And then again, we've got two threes. So we're going to go three times two over six. We don't have any fours, but we do have one five. Um, and so we're going to say plus five times one over six. Now I need you guys to notice something here. These numbers, one, plus two is three, plus two is five, plus one is six. Those numbers on the top should add up to be six, whatever the number is on the bottom, okay? If they don't, then you're missing something. All right, so when we do this, just like the previous problem, when we multiply them out, we're going to get 2.67 for our answer, okay? So now this one says expected values can be used to make decisions in business, insurance, traffic, games, etc. So Lisa has two choices of routes when she goes to school. Route A takes... 15 minutes. Route B takes 12 minutes unless there's a traffic jam, in which case the route takes 20 minutes. So if the chance of traffic jam is 15%, which route should she take? Well, first of all, um, the expected value of route A is always 15 minutes. See right here, route A, 15 minutes. So we're going to write 15 minutes here. So that, I guess she doesn't have any traffic on route A. So when we talk about route B, um, it says 12 minutes unless there's traffic jam. So if there's a traffic jam, it takes 20 minutes, and then it says it's 15% chance that there is traffic. So what I want to do is um, figure out, uh, I'm going to start with um, my no traffic. So that's 12 minutes. And if there's 15% chance there's traffic here, what is the chance that there's not traffic? We would do 100 minus 15, which is 85. That's 85%, which is 0.85, right? So 12 minutes without traffic, that would be an 85% chance that there's no traffic, right? And then it says 20 minutes if there is traffic. So we're going to add to that the 20 minutes at 15%. So when we do 12 times 0.85 plus 20 times 0.15, I got, now where's my paper, 13.2 minutes. Okay, so that, which one of those is shorter? Obviously Route B, right? It takes less time, even though sometimes I might hit traffic. Okay, all right, let's see if you guys can do the you try two and the you try three on the back, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, read this, see if you guys can figure it out. All right, so um, Jack can take one of three routes to work each day. Route A takes 16 minutes, Route B takes 10 minutes, and Route C takes 20 minutes. 
there's a 40% chance he will encounter an accident in Route A, which increases travel time to 12, 25 minutes. So let's look at Route A. Route A is here. So 16 minutes. Um, and then it says 40% chance he will encounter an accident in Route A, which increases travel time to 25 minutes. Okay. So here again, we've got 16 minutes at, and we're going to do 100 minus 40 again. That's going to be 60. That's going to be 60% then. 0.6 here plus um, our 40% chance, 25 minutes, right, at 40%. Okay. So, and we can just do 4.4. 4. So when we do this one, 16 times 0. 0.6 plus 25 times 0. 0.4, we get that it's 19.6 minutes here, okay? Now, if you haven't done one of these yet, go ahead and pause here and go ahead and do routes B and C. Okay, so then we got route B here. Um, 20 minutes there and 20% chance he will enter counter traffic if he takes Route B, which increases travel time to 40 minutes, okay? So now look, you could also do this the flipped way. We could say 40 minutes at 20%, um, right? And then his original time would have been 10 minutes, and that would be 80% of the time, right? So when we do this one, and I don't care which way you do it, if you want to do with traffic first or without traffic, it's up to you. Whichever way works better in your brain. So this one's 16 minutes. Then our final one is Route C is 20 minutes. And down here it says 10% chance of delay Route C to 32. Okay. So here we go again. I could go 32 times 0.1 plus... 20 times 0.9. So when we do this one, it was 21.2 minutes. So which one of these is the route you want to take? I would say route B, right? Because it takes the least amount of time. So route B was the answer. Any questions? All right, let's see if you guys can do this third one. Come back to me when you're done. On a mountain, it takes Sam two hours to climb the southern route, unless there's ice, which increased the time to four hours. And then over here, it takes him two and a half hours to climb the eastern route, or three hours if there's ice. So then the chance of ice on the southern route is 20%. And the chance of ice is 40% on the eastern route. So, um, again, you can start out with the amount of time it takes without it. So, we could say two times. And then if it's 20% chance there is ice, it's going to be 80% chance there is an ice, right? And then we, it takes four hours if there is ice, right? So, that's how we're going to set that one up. So, this is going to be 2.4 hours. Then we're going to do our other one. And again, I'm going to um, this time flip it. So I'm going to do it with ice first. So with ice, it takes three hours. And the chance of ice on this route was 0.4. And then we're going to add to that um, 2.5 hours. And again, remember, to get this, we're going to do 100 minus 40 or 0.4, whichever, and that's going to be 60, which would be 0.6 here, okay? So we do 3 times 0.4 plus 2.5 times 0.6, and that gives us 2.7 hours. So which route's better, y'all? Obviously the southern route, right? Okay. So some probability rules. Um, so the probability of an event A or B occurring is equal to the probability of event A occurring plus the probability of event B occurring. So I like to remember it this way. Or um, is a plus sign, right? 
and then the probability of, so we're going to add those probabilities together when we have an OR statement, okay? And then the second one is the probability of event A and event B occurring is equal to the probability of event A occurring times the probability of event B occurring. So on this one, again, I'm going to write the word and, and you could say either a multiplication sign or a dot, whatever, whatever would help you remember it, okay? Whichever. Um, so that's the way I keep it straight in my head. So now let's read example three. Jaden has a, a bag of marbles. There are 25 marbles in the bag, eight red marbles, 10 blue marbles, seven green marbles. And um, it tells you in this one how many marbles there were in the whole bag, but oftentimes you're gonna have to add these numbers up, the eight plus the 10 plus the seven, which is still 25. Um, but if it doesn't tell you the total number in the bag, then you wanna do that first, okay? Then it says, what's the probability of picking a red or a green marble. So let's look back up here at the number of red and the number of green, okay? So this is just a probability problem, okay? So red marbles are right here. So we're gonna say eight over 25. And by the way, it says a probability of red or green, okay? Y'all see this word or right here? So what does that mean we're gonna do? That means we're going to add, okay? And then we have our green marbles, right? So we had seven green marbles. So we're gonna add the seven over 25 to that. So that's gonna give us 15 over 25, which reduces to B. Five goes into both of those, three over five, which is also equal to 0. 0.6, which is also equal to 60%. And your answer could be represented any one of those three ways, guys. All right, so this is um, example four, our last example. So Michaela's applying to three colleges. She makes estimates of her chances of being accepted and estimates her chance of receiving financial aid from each uh, presented below. So this time, because these are and statements, it says at which college is she most likely to be accepted and receive financial aid. So and remember, and statement means multiplication, and statement, multiplication, and statement, multiplication. So all we have to do here is multiply these probabilities together. So on this one, we're going to do 0.75 times 0.3. That's going to give us 0 0.225. And then college B right here, right? So that's going to be 0.65 times 0.4. Remember, we're changing these two uh, probabilities by um, moving the decimal place. So on this one, it's 0 0.26. Then our last one right here, so we're going to do 0 0.7 times 0.45, and that one is equal to 0 0.315. And again, this time it says, so Michaela has the highest probability of being accepted and receiving financial aid at which college, y'all? college C, right? We're looking for the highest number here. So that was this one right there. So I had a couple questions about the homework in my room. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of these with you, at least how to initially set them up, okay? So I had a question about um, number six. Um, so this says, in a game of chance, the contestant must choose a number from one of three categories. Correct number choices in category A are worth 1,500, but a penalty of 1,000 for each is incorrect choice. Correct number of choice in category B is worth a thousand um, with a five hundred dollar penalty for each incorrect choice. Correct number for C. So okay, so I'm gonna set up A for y'all and then you guys should be able to figure out the rest of this problem. So this is again number six on y'all's um, 10.3 practice. So for A, I'm going to do 0 0.05 because it says in the problem that I have um, at the, at the end of the problem, it says the probability of choosing correctly is 5% in category A. So if I choose correctly, then I'm going to make $1,500. But it says if I choose incorrectly, which would be 0.95, remember we're going to do 100 minus 0.05 or 0.5, um, and then we would lose money on this one, right? So it says we would lose $1,000. So when we do this, when we multiply these out, we're going to get I got negative $875 for this one. Now, B is going to be similar to it, okay? So go ahead and work B and C and then figure out what your answer is, okay? Now, I also want to talk to you all about seven. So when you guys are doing number seven, the way you're going to do this one is um, you're going to look at, for seven and eight, actually, you're going to look at 
um, because these are all equal equal distance, so or equal equal spaces. So there are five different colors, five different numbers, right? So on the first one, let's just look at number one. So that's going to be one times one fifth, right? And again, we're not we don't care where the arrow is on these. Are y'all got me? So we're, all we're looking for is the outcomes. So then we would do um, three times one fifth, and so on. Okay. Um, and that's how we would get the expected outcome for seven, eight. How many different spaces do we have? Hopefully you see that. Um, this one is going to be one thirds, right? So you're going to multiply 18 times one third, 11 times one third, nine times one third. Okay. Got it. Um, and then when we look at number nine, this one's a little different because they have unequal spinners here. So this time I might actually turn this into, you can still do this as fractions or you can do it as percentages because hopefully you can see that the 100 is one fourth, which is 25% and the 12 is three fourths or 75%. So you could set that up either way there. So you could say 100 times one fourth um, plus 12 times 3 fourths, or you could set it up 100 times 0.25 um, plus 12 times 0.75. Doesn't matter which one you do, okay? Um, number 10, similarly, obviously 8 is half of the spinner, and the 16 is 1 fourth, and the 20 is 1 fourth. So again, you could say 8 times 0.5. Um, plus 16 times 0.25 plus 20 times 0.25. You could do it either way. Um, so that's just help for y'all on that one. And then when you look at number 11, y'all, um, it says Jack has a bag of marbles. There are 30 marbles in the bag, 12 red, 8 blue, 10 green. Each red marble is worth 5 points. So with this one, when you're talking about number 11, y'all, um, we're going to do uh, the red marble. There's has five points and how many red marbles were there? Yes, 12. So you're going to do 12 over 30 and you're going to continue this problem just like that. Okay.